This is the next video in the chapter on composition of solutions. We just talked about dilution and what it is and how to calculate how much stock solution to start with. In this video, we're going to talk about what you should physically do when you do a dilution and we'll do a couple of example problems. So if you need to take a minute to pause and write these down, please do that now. Okay, assuming you're with me and you have this written down, when we do a dilution, we usually choose to use what's called a volumetric flask. And you'll recognize it in the laboratory because it has a very long, thin neck and a large round shaped bulb at the bottom where most of the liquid is held. And there is a single line near the top of the neck. So each volumetric flask is calibrated to hold one particular volume. And the most important thing of doing a dilution other than doing the calculation, of course, is remembering that the neck is so narrow that once you fill it with liquid, it is almost impossible to mix your solution together. So the other important part is to mix the solution while it's only half filled. And to wait for your video camera to come back into focus. Okay, so the important steps of doing a dilution after the calculation, is to measure out your, oops, stock solution volume. And add it, I guess we need to add step zero. Step zero, math, calculate stock solution volume. So calculate how much stock solution you need, then measure it in some sort of precise glassware and put that in. Step two is going to be add only half the solvent. And mix until the solute is dissolved. You might not appreciate it yet, but this is actually the most important step of the process. When we add solvent, we only want to add solvent about halfway to fill the flask so we have room in the flask to mix things. The one other component we need to mix things is empty space. So after we have sufficiently mixed what's in there, we will add the rest of the solvent. and fill to the line, the only line. And then we'll mix again. We still want to mix when we finish to make sure it's totally homogeneous throughout. But again, it's very difficult to mix at the end because this part is very narrow and there was only a little tiny bubble of airspace available. So it takes quite a lot of effort to mix and it doesn't do a very good job. So we want to mix as much as possible before the liquid fills into the neck. Okay, so now that we know how to physically do that, let's look at a couple of example problems and practice our M1V1 skills. So this problem says to make 150 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide solution, that's what the aqueous means, what volumes of water and 20 molar sodium hydroxide are needed? So let's look at what we've got. We have sort of two situations here. We have this situation where we have the one molar solution, and then we have this situation where we have the 20 molar solution. And they're solutions of the same thing, which tells me we're going to be doing a dilution, especially because it says I need to add water. So a dilution means I'm gonna need my M1V1 equals M2V2 formula for dilution. And I need to decide which the one or the two I'm gonna use for each situation so I don't get mixed up later. So I'm gonna say that the M1 and the V1 are gonna be the more concentrated solution and my situation two is gonna be the less concentrated solution. So let's see what information we've got. We've got two, two molarities, a one and a 20. So the more concentrated one is gonna be my M1. The less concentrated one is gonna be my M2. 
We do have a volume here next to the less concentrated one. So that will be V2. And then we are trying to find V1, We're trying to find that volume. Let's see, so what do we know? So we know M1, 20.0, 20 moles per liter of our stock solution. We need to solve for the amount of volume of our stock solution, which is traditionally what you will need to do when you go into the lab. And then we are trying to make a solution of our choice, a one mole per liter solution, and we would like to make 150 milliliters of it, which is gonna be 0 0.15 liters. So liters is gone, moles is gone. That last number is gonna be in volume, V1. Type that sucker into the calculator. We should get 0 0.0075 liters, which is equal to 7.5 milliliters. And again, it's more useful here to include the number of the unit and the name of the compound. So when we do the dilution, this side, the left side, the first side is the stock solution, which is our more concentrated one. So we need to take 7.5 milliliters out of our super concentrated 20 molar stock solution. And that's how we're going to start a dilution. So we need seven and a half mils of stock for that process. And then the problem asked for another volume. It asked for the volume of the 20 molar stock and it asked for the volume of water. And this is because it's important not to forget that you don't just do a dilution by taking out some of the stock. The other part of diluting is adding the solvent. So the solvent takes up whatever space is not taken up by the solute. So we're making 150 milliliters total and we are going to make 7.5 milliliters of that, our stock solution. And if we take the difference, we should get 142.5 milliliters of water. The dilution is about measuring out very, very precisely how much stock solution you need to put in and then filling the rest of it up to 150 mils with water. Okay, excellent. So in this problem, we went from, we tried to solve for how much volume of stock solution we needed. Sometimes we need to use the equation going the other direction. Sometimes we need to solve for a molarity. So in this next example, it says if five milliliters of 20 molar sodium hydroxide stock is diluted to 75 milliliters, which again, we recommended only to do for small volumes, what is the new molarity of that solution that we made? So we're looking here and again, we're seeing the word diluted. We see the word diluted, we know we need to use the dilution equation. M1V1 equals M2V2 go looking for our variable. So we seem to have this situation, a little bit of a very concentrated solution. And then we have a second situation here where we make a new solution that's a lot bigger. So I'm gonna make my situation one, the more concentrated one. I'm gonna make my situation two less concentrated and I'm gonna write it here so I don't forget. So we have, this is our only molarity and it's gonna be the more concentrated one. So that's our M1. We have two volumes. Uh, the first one that goes with the more concentrated solution is gonna be our V1. And the 75 is gonna be our V2. And then we are trying to find our less concentrated molarity, which will be M2. We can plug those in, M1. 20 moles per liter. You can also write large M as the unit here, but I like to write moles per liter so that the moles and the liters can cancel separately. Uh, we used five milliliters of that 20 molar solution. We are trying to make mystery solution of mystery molarity, and we wanna make 75 milliliters of it. So you might stop me here and you might say, oh, we forgot. We forgot to convert that into liters. 
but I have a secret to share. And the secret is that you can choose whatever unit you like for the volumes, as long as they are the same, because there is one volume on each side and whatever the unit is, it will cancel as long as you choose the same unit for the other side. Let's make a note. These units need to match. And by these, I mean this one and this one. But they don't have to be in liters. Well, that's cool. We can leave them both in milliliters as long as we show our work and we remember which one we were using. You can also change the value for concentration, but there's not that many situations where you would want to do that. Molarity is usually our best bet. Okay, so 20 times 5 divided by 75 with two significant figures will give us 1.3 moles per liter, and that is going to be the concentration of the solution after the dilution. Oh, I forgot to write what it was. Sodium hydroxide solution. So this formula can be used to solve different types of questions. They might ask you for the initial molarity, the final molarity, the initial or final volume. Just remember that when you have a stock solution, the volume of the stock solution is the volume of the stock you are taking out, not the volume of the whole container. Because we said we were not going to dilute the whole container because that was a ridiculous idea. We're only going to dilute a little bit of that, and that's the volume that goes in that formula. 